This is for musicians, so have patience. Okay. So the a tritone, here's my little whiteboard. Um, uh, tritone equals three whole steps. On the guitar, this is a whole step with a fret in the middle, so it's one, two, three. So G to C sharp is called a tritone. Those two discs, G, C sharp. And you can see it visually this way. On the guitar, you could visually make a tritone just by doing that. Okay. Every 5-7 chord, every... All right, there are 12 keys. Every one of the 12 keys has its own dominant 7th chord. Okay. And each one has its own distinct tritone. However, there's an odd relationship. I'm going to take the chords... This is what music theorists notice. You take the chord C7 and you take the chord G flat 7. C, E, G, B flat. And then for the G flat chord, we have G flat, B flat, D flat, E. Now the tritone, E to B flat, is, is three whole steps apart. All right, but here, this is the root third fifth flat seven. All right, here, the third is E, and here, the flat seven is B flat. In the G flat seven chord, this happens with no other chord in relation to C at least. They have the same tritone. B yeah. flat to E is also three whole steps. If you go from E to B flat up the, up the scale, it will be three whole steps. If you go B flat to E up the scale, it will be three whole steps. When you invert the interval called a tritone, you still get a tritone. Okay. When you invert a major third, you get a minor sixth. When you invert a perfect fourth, you get a perfect fifth. Okay. But when you invert a tritone, you get a tritone. That's one of the magical qualities of this particular interval. So what I'm pointing out here is we have a reverse situation with the tritone and the G flat 7 chord because what was once the flat 7th in this chord becomes the 3rd in this chord. What was once the 3rd in this chord becomes the flat 7 in this chord. And that's important and I'll tell you why. Let's look at it sonically. Let's check it out sonically. Okay. Um, so here's okay, the tritone. Yours just turned it died. Off. Oh, that's too bad. All right. That's C7 and G flat 7. All right, so here's a C7 chord. And I'm going to take all the other notes out and just leave the tritone here, the E and the B flat. And if you notice, if I take this down and make this one go up, there's a resolution. C7 to F, right? Mm -hmm. Now, but there's another chord that has the same tritone, the G flat 7. All right, here it is in C7. Right. Here it is in F sharp 7. So the theory said, well, if this does this, I could not only get it from a C7 chord, but why not from a G flat 7 chord? So they went, and they went, oh, that does resolve. Wow. Right? So when we have this section, uh, in the world waiting for the came around to it. This chord right here mm -hmm. is a tritone substitution for a D7 chord. Again, the, this chord has these two notes in it. That's a tritone, A flat 7. If I made a D7, same two chord, same two notes. So let's do it, resolve it as if it was a, the, the original chord and not the substitution. We get. Hear that? Okay. Now we get. You can hear that in songs like Ain't She Sweet. Ain't She oh, Sweet. Sure. Alright. So if Ain't She Sweet didn't have the A flat, the A flat 7 there is the, re is the tritone substitution. If it didn't have that, it'd be. Uh, ain't she sweet, ain't she. Wait, uh. uh yeah. And the melody can't fit on the D7 chord anyway, but... But... Uh, it does there, right? So that's a tritone substitution. Um, 
and there it is in Sexy Sadie. Well, look, you know, if you want, if you're, if you're into analyzing music theory the way I am, um, the big uh, tip-off, if you have a tritone substitution, is that the, you'll see seventh chords moving down in half steps. Right? Okay. So, like, in terms of the jazz turnaround, for example. Okay. This is the evolution of the jazz turnaround. First we had G, E minor, A minor, D. And what a turnaround is, is the, the tag part of a song that brings us back to the beginning of the song. What they did though, this now I'm just taking right off the template, the natural chords that form. G, E minor, A minor, D7. The next step in evolution was, well, G, they said, um, I can take this E minor and turn it into an E7. Okay. That'll resolve to A minor, that'll go to D7 and G. So I changed my E minor to an E7. But you could keep the E minor as it is, and instead of doing A minor, you could make that a 7. Or you could do both. So it's, you could have... Or... Or... All of those work as, as turnarounds. Now you notice it has that barbershop qu quartet kind of resolution right. sound. But now... Another thing they did was they said, okay, well, instead of this G chord, the, the top two notes of my G chord is a B and a D, and if I add an F sharp, I could turn that G into a B minor. So they replaced the G with B minor, and they went... All right, that was one of the next steps. Then they did stuff like, at this point, the combinations are endless, because now I could tritone substitute the E7 if indeed I had decided to put an E7 there instead of E minor. So I do the tritone substitution. This is the distance. The old European uh, police ambulance horn. Right. So uh, instead of, I'm going to go B minor, instead of going to E7, I'm going to take the tritone substitution of E7. This is an E note, this is a B flat note, I form a 7th chord there, and I get... Alright, I could try to substitute the D7 chord to A flat 7, then I get... This is where you start to get resolutions, like you, there's so many combinations after this. You can do stuff like... That's where you get those turnarounds in jazz. Yeah. Alright? And this is all done with tritone substitution stuff. The discovery of the tritone substitution must have made these guys really, really happy, because, you know, you get some really remarkable tones out of it. When would that have happened, roughly? Ooh, oh, man. Probably during the bop. Period. Yeah. Forties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I. Thirties uh, music had a lot of this movement, you know. But I don't think they discovered the, or they made extensive use of the tritone substitution till later, probably okay. the forties. Huh. And yeah. it was jazz guys that figured this out. Tell the truth, I don't. I have no idea who figured it out. It's just something they threw at us in school. You know, what they do in school is they throw me a little crumb, and then I'd, I'd take that crumb and I'd, I'd make a whole loaf of bread out of it, you know, I, I, you know, I, I would look into, you know, like I've taught you about the minor ninth rule, and like in a G major seven, you know, mm -hmm. this is the major seven note, this is the root, if you put the root higher than the major seven, it sounds like dog, Yeah. so you have to reverse their roles, but it happens, they t what they told us in music school was, uh, if you have a major 7 chord, make sure the root is below the major 7. That's all they friggin' said. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking at other chords and I went, wait a second, this is also true for a minor ninth chord. Here's an E minor 9. And we have this major 7 interval. If I put the 3rd up top and the 9 below, it would sound horrible, this chord. Doesn't sound like a minor ninth at all. Yeah. That does. All right. So this is what I call the minor ninth rule. It's, there's this interval that happens in many chords, thirteenth chords, uh, minor nine chords, um, and other chords as well. That's not to say that it's totally verboten. All right. Dominant seventh chords ask. They're they're very tense and they they want to move. Uh, so they're asking for complexity. Major and minor chords don't want that much complexity, but seventh chords do. They want to. Like, screw with the ear, so when the resolution comes, it's just like, ah, you know. Mm -hmm. So play, play the chord that doesn't. What was it, the ninth? Oh, uh, ninth? oh the, the chord that, the chord that 
that is allowed? Uh, is more allowed? Well, you're talking about, yeah, well, just the stuff that you just were just saying. Right. Take it where the one that doesn't want to move, and then the ones that do, or the one that does. Oh, okay, so yeah, this is the minor ninth, of course, we do this to it, it sounds horrible. And we fix it by that. Okay. Major seven. We fix that. Okay. But a chord that has a flat nine in it is allowable. Okay. Because of such a pretty rev resolution. It does sort of demand re resolving, though. Yeah, it demands resolving. Yeah. But it's a dominant chord, it's complex, and therefore it, it should be. Uh, resolve. Now I could show you, like if you start altering notes of a, of a chord, especially a dominant chord, they call them altered chords, eventually what you get is a hybrid of, this is really fascinating actually, of the tritone substitution plus the original chord kind of blended together. Okay. All right. For example, here's an E7. If I flat the 9 of the E7, I get... And then I could flat the 5th uh, of the uh, E7. Uh, Right? Mm -hmm. Well, this part of the chord right here is a B-flat major chord. And if I throw this note in from the E, E7, this is a B-flat 7 chord right here. Okay. And here's an E7 chord. Put them together, you get a really complex chord. But in terms of resolution and minor keys, it's awesome. Mm. All right? Yeah. So, uh... Let's see, let's, let's do that again. All right. Yeah. I played with that kind of stuff. I wrote this song. It goes... Uh, to play with that kind of sour, yeah. sour tone. Sure. But there, like that resolved beautifully, though. So. Yeah, yeah, it, it keeps up the tension and moves you to, to a final resolution. Sure. Which really, when you think about it, the art of composition is simply about creating tension and resolving it, creating tension and resolving it. It's like life, you know? Yeah, or theater, or film. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so absolutely. You set up all that stuff. Uh, what time have we got, bud? Well, it's 11.15. Okay, I'm wondering if, if we should try... Not a bad you could idea. maybe stop there and see if you can download mine, and yeah. uh, and see if that will work now. Because I would hate to sort of miss this last third or whatever. Oh, goodbye, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs>